as of this week, uh, July 2018, uh, it has been one year since the death of this woman, Marion Merzikani. Um, Marion Merzikani, as you probably know, was the first woman ever to win the Field Medal, the Nobel Prize of Mathematics. Uh, actually, it's a bit harder to win than a Nobel Prize. Um, it's a bit more stringent conditions. But in any case, uh, this was a very important moment for the mathematical community, in my opinion. Um, and Mariam died of breast cancer one year ago, three years after this video, after receiving the award. Um, and so I thought I'd take the opportunity uh, to talk a little bit about some of the cool things that she discovered and these funny things that she studied. So here we go. Three... Uh, Four things that you didn't know about Mariam Merzikani. So thing number one, uh, Mariam was not just the first woman to win the Fields Medal, she was the first Iranian and she was the first Muslim. So uh, yeah, Mariam grew up in Iran. Uh, she her, her, vic, her achievement meant a lot to the Iranian community and uh, there's a very touching tribute to her in Farsi by this guy, a former colleague. Uh, she also became the first woman ever to be shown in the Iranian media without a headscarf on. So uh, what happened was that uh, this guy, the president of Iran, tweeted a picture of her uh, when she won the prize uh, without a headscarf. Um, previously, the media had been completely relying on uh, images, this, pretty much this image of her. Um, she actually, she just stopped wearing a headscarf uh, towards the end of her life. Uh, and uh, in some cases, the media would Photoshop a headscarf onto pictures of her, which is very unpleasant. Uh, but yes, after he tweeted the picture, um, they realized, okay, it's legal. It's, it's, it's not breaking that much of a taboo anymore for us to show her the way that she lived. Um, Unfortunately, also due to her being a Muslim, well, her parents being Muslims, uh, they almost missed her funeral because of being unable to travel to the United States due to the executive order you can see being held here. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, so, but thing number two, uh, her discoveries have applications to understanding the Big Bang. Uh, so probably, um, You've heard of string theory, or maybe M-theory. Uh, M-theory is what this guy, Stephen Hawking, will tell you is uh, the, well, what he would have told you, um, is humanity's best hope for understanding the Big Bang. Uh, M-theory was created by this guy, Ed Witten. Um, I certainly don't understand M-theory, but I know that it's about uh, weirdly shaped surfaces moving around in weirdly shaped spaces. Um, and Marion Merzikani's stuff is certainly very useful for studying those. So we've got a weird surface here. Uh, we're going to think for a second, though, about a very simple surface. Uh, here we have a flat plane, and we are going to imagine putting an insect somewhere on this plane and pointing it in some direction. And this insect is very dumb, it has no ability to do anything but go straight forward, um, uh, following the surface that it's on, uh, and creating a, a straight line. Um, if you bring in a more complex surface, just this sphere here for example, then this insect will go around and create a geodesic, in this case, uh, well, it always it, the in, the definition of a geodesic is that it's this path that an insect would take. So a straight line is a closed geodesic. It is a a straight line is a geodesic on a flat surface. On a sphere, a circle is a geodesic, and a closed geodesic is one that wraps back on itself like that. Um, on a plane, there are no closed geodesics. Um, on a sphere, there are no geodesics that are not closed, um, but things get a bit more complicated, uh, significantly more complicated, when you're talking about a funky surface like this one. Um, let's have a smaller step up again, though. Uh, here we have a donut, and if we point this uh, insect in a random direction, now this, uh, this is again a geodesic, and it might 
close up on itself. Let's have a look in this case. We might get a little bit lucky. Oh, it just missed. Um, I might be able to get it to close up if I'm very careful about where I put it. So let's put it here. Your aim has to be incredible with this. No, that's not going to close up. Very close. Uh, oh well, no closed geodesic for us on the donut. Um, but Marian Mirza Carney, uh, every once in a while this insect does manage to close up, uh, especially if I can get it doing a, sim doing a nice, mm, simple one. Uh, but Marian Mirza Carney, uh, she studied not just one surface, but the set of all possible surfaces with certain features. And in particular, uh, she can tell you if you give her the... She's got a formula. Um, if you give her formula the number of holes in your surface, um, then it will tell you the prob her formula will tell you the probability that a random uh, simple geodesic will close up. Um, in the case of this surface, for example, the probability, I, I don't know whether this one will be an example, but the prob I can tell you that the probability that a random geodesic, a uh, random point and direction to go in for this insect, probability that it'll close up is 1 in 7. Um, now thing num oh, and by the way, uh, that research all has applications to boring, useful stuff like understanding paint on a car and uh, processing geometry for like 3D animation. Um, okay, thing number three, Marian Merzakani technically wants won a prize worth infinity dollars. Uh, so this is impressive. Uh, what did she do? It for? Oh, well, it's a fun story from her childhood. It led to her first publication. Um, she was a very gifted kid. Uh, they, uh, she was the first woman. She was the first woman person of any gender to get full marks at the uh, maths Olympiad, um, and she was given a very difficult puzzle, which was find a graph. Uh, and this is a graph. This is a graph. This is a graph. Uh, find a graph, which is a set of points connected up with lines um, that has certain features. They said, You'll, it's pretty hard to find a graph of this kind. Uh, we'll give you a dollar for every graph uh, of this kind that you can find. Um, here are some of the ones that she found. Uh, we'll give you a dollar for every graph of this kind, but she actually ended up generating a formula that could give you an infinite number of graphs of the type that she was looking for. So yeah, uh, that's the kind of thing that she'll do. Um, what was she looking for specifically? Uh, so we can take a graph and we can complete it. Uh, here's another random graph and we can complete that as well. What does it mean to complete a graph? It means to connect every single point to every single other point. Um, uh, she wasn't just looking at complete graphs, though. She was looking at things called complete tripartite graphs. So these both are complete tripartite. As you can see, you've got many, many connections in these two graphs. Uh, and in particular, but in particular, every graph is con every point is connected to every single other point, with the exception of points that are in these three groups. So no point in this group of three is connected to any point in the, the uh, any other point in this group of three, but they're all connected to the other points uh, in this in this graph. Um, if I were to draw a line between these two points, then we would see that uh, then it would not be a tripartite graph anymore. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so tripartite graphs uh, the puzzle is, can you decompose them, that means divide them up, into uh, other graphs such that uh, the other graphs have their, the edges of the original graph in five cycles? So what is a cycle first? Um, let's bring in one of these things. A cycle is when you have a series of edges that you can sort of loop back on one another. So apparently Marion Merzikani likes loops. Um, uh, let's have another example. If I connect up these two, then these three edges here form a uh, 
a cycle. That's a three cycle. A five cycle is a cycle of length five. So we've got one, two, three, four, five edges in there, five edges in there, five edges in there, all cycles. Um, some tripartite graphs can be decomposed into five cycles, some can't. Um, it is very difficult to work out uh, whether a tripartite graph can be decomposed, as I found when I tried to write an algorithm that did this. Um, and uh, yeah, my computer crashed because um, yeah, I had given it an algorithm that would take until the end of the universe, possibly, to complete. Um, so, so, uh, Mariam, she invented a, she came up with a set of conditions. Uh, what you're looking at here is, in a sense, the set of all, uh, tripartite graphs. So, there's one. Uh, oh, there's a simpler one. Here's another. Yeah. Uh, we've again got groups, and all of these, it, within this group, these points are not connected to one another, but they are connected to all other, uh, uh, they are connected to all of the points in the other groups. Um, Merza can't, so for, for every point in here, there is a tripartite graph. Um, and she considered this set of all possible tripartite graphs, and she came up with a set of conditions, um, here's all the points, uh, well, all the graphs slash points that meet condition one. Here's all the points that meet condition two. Here's all the points that meet condition three. Um, if we take away all points that don't meet all of her conditions, here's the set of, uh, she, she would claim, uh, well, she proved that if you've got a uh, set, of, if you've got a point in here, um, or rather, if a graph can be decomposed into five cycles, as this one we know can, um, then it is definitely in this set of points. So it would not vanish when I'm doing this. Um, but she was unable to prove, though she did reckon that uh, it's definitely the case that every single point in this group can definitely be Decompose. She she proved that her conditions that these conditions were necessary, um, but she didn't know whether they're sufficient. And if you manage to prove that they are sufficient or that they aren't sufficient, then um, yeah, you can publish the paper. Um, yeah, and that brings us on to the final thing. Uh, Mariam Mezzacani doodled so much while working that her daughter thought she was an artist. I find this story tremendously sweet and it's very interesting. Uh, so. Her work is extremely visual. All of this, all of this stuff, right? Um, uh, she, yeah, and so she did. She used to write equations, but uh, her preferred method of working, she'd have these huge pieces of paper, and she'd just make it so that she could doodle, doodle, doodle. Um, you know, doodle whatever she needed to doodle in order to think about these uh, problems that she was facing. Um, and it's such a pity that when the media covered her reception, her achievement in winning the award and uh, her death, um, you really didn't see many visualizations like that, which I think is such a shame. Um, but there you go.